Welcome back to another video. From this video we will start using visual code and maybe in some cases we will still go back to, to Dartpad but I think for now it's, it's better if we can get some input from the console and also work with that inputs later on and maybe create different files and stuff like that. So before we start with loops today let's just create a new project in Visual Studio Code. So you can go to command and spacebar on your Mac if you've got a Mac in Spotlight Search you can just type terminal and that will bring up your, your terminal or your command line. And then for Windows, you can just right click on your start button and click run and then type in CMD for your command line there. And you can open that up and you'll see basically the same sort of uh, window opening where you can type some terminal commands. So in, in my case, I've got a folder on my desktop and on my desktop uh, in that folder, I've got a folder called project or dart project. And in there, I want to create a new folder. So I'm going to say change the di directory to desktop forward slash, uh, let's say dart underscore projects. And you can see it takes me into that directory. Uh, on Windows, you can just type DIR and on Mac, you can type Alice and it will give you a list of folders in there. So I've got an example folder for dot loops, but I want to create a new one. So you can do the same. I'm going to say make the directory and the folder or the directory I want to make is, uh, let's say loop underscore example. Right. And then let's go into that folder loop underscore example. And now I can start my visual code in that folder. So remember that you could have changed this or created this directory also in your normal folders. Um, open that up, go into that folder, make a directory, and then just go into your terminal and get into that directory. So I'm currently in the loop example directory, and I will just say code with a space and a dot. And that opens up Xcode for me. Right, so your Visual Studio Code should look something like this now. You've got your loop example there, and inside of that, we're going to create a new file. So you're going to write or just click on it, and let's call it main.dart. Right, so if you click on main.dart, it opens up. You can close the welcome screen there, and we'll need to start with a main method. Right, so in this video, we will have a look at the different types of loops that you can get in Dart and how to use them. So let's start with the while loop. So I'm going to start declaring a value. So let's say x equals 0. And the first thing we're going to look at today is the while loop. So I'm going to add a comment here, the while loop. Okay, so there's my declaration. i remove that bracket now. Right, so there's the declaration int x equals zero and the while loop will basically take in a boolean expression and it will evaluate that expression to either true or false and if that expression is true the while loop will keep executing if that expression is false it will break out of the loop so let's do a simple loop example and we'll say while the x is less than five i want to print out Let's say, hello world. Okay, now one last step that we need to add at the, at the end is a X plus plus. And if we run this now, so you can just use uh, command S or control S on Windows in order to save this. Now, how do we run this application again? So you'll need to go to your terminal window at the top and click on new terminal. Now, if you open it up from the bottom, you'll see there's your terminal. So it's basically the same terminal that we had now. It's just running inside of VS Code. So now if we go into that loop example, we're just going to say dot main dot dot. And that will start running my application. And you can see it printed out hello world one, two, three, four, five different times. So how does a loop work? First step to do any sort of loop is you need to have a loop control variable. So this variable is the variable that controls how many times the loop will actually execute. So this will be step number one. Step number one is declare and initialize your loop control variable. So you need to declare and initialize loop control variable. In this case, our loop control variable is called x and we have initialized it to a zero. That's where it will start. 
Then step number two is to test it. So I'm going to add a comment here to test the loop control variable. That's step number two. So we've initialized and declared it. Then the next step is test the loop control variable. So here we say, is the x less than five? So x will start at zero. If the x is less than five, it's true, it is. It will enter the while loop and it will print out hello world. And then step number three is this part where we say change the loop control variable. The problem is that if I do not change the loop control variable, x will stay at zero, which means that x will always be less than five. And this while will run and run and run and never ever stops. And it's going to print out a hello world all over the place. And it will continue to do so unless unless you actually stop it. So these are the steps for a loop. You declare and initialize your loop control variable. You test the loop control variable and you change the loop control variable. So this change could be a number of things. It could be just incrementing like I'm doing here, x++, which means I'm going to just add 1 to x. Or it could be I'm going to add more than 1. So I could say uh, plus equals 2 in order to add 2 every time it loops. Um, but uh, most useful or the most used one is, is probably just the, the increment one. You can also decrement with a minus minus. But the main thing is step number three, you need to change the loop control variable. Okay, so let's just run through the loop. It will start at x equals zero. Then it's going to test is x less than five? Yes, it is. I think just for this demonstration purposes, let's keep it a three there. So uh, if we save this and quickly run it again, by the way, in your terminal at the bottom, you can just use the up or down arrows to get previous um, commands that you used and you can just enter to run them again. So now if you, you can see that if I use a three there, it's going to print out three hello worlds. OK, so let's have a look at this. We start at zero. Then we test, is x less than 3? Yes, because it's zero. And it will print out hello world. And that's the first hello world it prints out. Then it increments by 1, which means x becomes a 1 now. Is 1 less than 3? Yes, it is. Prints out hello world. So it's going to print out the second one there, hello world. Then it goes and it increments again. Now that that 1 becomes a 2. Is 2 still less than 3? Yes, it is. So it prints out hello world. And it's the last hello world we see there. Then it increments again, which means that 2 becomes a 3 now. And is 3 less than 3? No, it's exactly 3. It's not less than 3. And that's when the loop will exit and your coding will resume where my cursor is at now. So it will go outside of the loop and continue with the rest. Right, just to um, break up our code a bit, I'm going to add a print statement here before we go on to the next type of loop. Um, let's just add a new line character here with a few stars. And maybe another new line character there. And I'm going to use this print statement, let's say there at the top, just to add some space. We have that print statement again. And now our second loop that we're going to have a look at quickly is the do while loop. So this one was the while loop. This one is the do while loop. So how does the do while loop work? I'm going to do the same thing. I want to print out exactly the same way. So you can see the three different loops actually doing the same thing. So let's say int y equals zero. So instead of using x, I'm going to use y. So again, step number one is declare and initialize your loop control variable. So we've done that. Step number two is we need to start testing. Okay, so that testing part in a do while works a bit different. And I'm going to explain now the difference between while and do while. So for your do while, you can see you have a do keyword and then your opening and closing brackets. And whatever you want to have uh, looped must be inside of these two brackets. And then after that bracket, we add, add a while, your brackets again. And you end off with the same with the semicolon. So now in that while we will do the same as we did there. There we checked for x equals three. We're going to check here for y less than three. Sorry, not equals y x less than three or while y less than three. So you can see then whatever we want to do must now be done in these two brackets. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to still use those same two steps to print out. And you can see there's my do while now. So I'm going to say do this, print hello world, increment the x, and while it's less than 3. So my three steps are still there. 
Step number one, declare and initialize a loop control variable. Step number two is testing the loop control variable. And then step number three, there must also be an increment part. But for the do while loop, those three still exist, but they, they work a bit differently. So in the do while loop, you will see that we first do something and then we test. So for the while loop, we call this a pre-test loop. So a pre-test loop means we test first before we start looping. Whereas for the do while loop, we call this a post-test loop. And a post-test loop means I first do something and then I test. So how does this loop work? And I'm going to run this quickly. Let me just add that line also at the bottom. We save and let's run it again. Ah, we've got an unlimited loop there. So you can use control Z to actually stop that running. So let's quickly see why did I get this unlimited loop. The loop never stopped or infinite loop. It, it never stopped running here in my console or in my terminal. So why did we get that? Well, I just copied and pasted the code from here. So X++ was there, whereas I'm actually working with a Y and I've got an X++, which means my step number three there, that changing the loop control variable actually never happened for this loop. So instead of having X++ there, I should have Y++. Right, so then I'm incrementing or changing Y and I will not get an infinite loop. Right, let's test this out quickly and run it again. Okay, so let's look at the printout. So you'll see um, there's my first printout. That's the, the while loops three values, and this is the do while's three values. So you can see it works exactly the same. But what is the difference? We start off with y equals zero, then we go into the do. Now you can see there's no checking. We just go in, we print out hello world. Then we make the y one more, so now it becomes one, and then we test. Is one less than three? Yes, it is. So remember the first printout happened automatically, whether it's true or false. So that one printed. Then we incremented, we made the 0 a 1, and we're testing. Is 1 less than 3? Yes. So we print out hello world again. That's the second hello world. We increment that 1 now to a 2, and then we test. Is 2 still less than 3? Yes. And we print hello world again. And now that 2 becomes a 3, and then... Is 3 less than 3? No. And it will exit and basically go to where my cursor is at now and carry on with the rest of the coding. So what is the difference then between the while loop and the do while except for this one is called a pre-test loop and this one is called a post-test loop. The while loop runs zero or more times because we test first. But for the do while loop, this one runs one or more times. So it will always run exactly once before it starts testing. So that's the difference between the two loops. Right, so let's uh, get to the last type of loop that we get here, and that is the for loop. So the for loop also, uh, this uh, the format of the for loop is a bit different than the other two. So you'll get this following format. You basically get two sets of uh, semicolons there, with values in between them. So if I run my coding now, whatever I put in here, so let's let's do the print hello world again. That's what we want to execute. If I run my coding now, this will give me an unlimited loop also, or an infinite loop. Right, so the first part, again, my first step is to declare and initialize your loop control variable. And that's what's going to go into the first part here. So I'm going to say int, let's take, take i, equals zero. So instead of using y or x, I'm using i. Then the second part there, you can see there's three parts. The second part is your second step that says test the loop control variable. So I'm going to test the loop control variable by just saying, like we said, y less than 3. In this case, it is i less than 3. Now you can add some space. And then the, st the last step is then change the loop control variable. So the loop control variable is declared as i. So I'm going to go there and I'm going to change it by saying i++. So now if we print this out, if we, if we run this one quickly, 
you will see we get exactly the same output. Three hello worlds for the while loop, there's the do while loop, and there's our for loop. Okay, exactly the same. So why was it not necessary for me to actually go into the brackets and use the I++ there? Because we did it inside of the brackets for the do while loop, and we did it inside the brackets for the while loop. So remember for the for loop, this part there, the changing of the variable is part of your for loops declaration there basically. So all three steps is basically inside of the declaration of your for loop there. Whereas in uh, the while, that's just a Boolean expression. This one contains three different things it's doing. It's, it's initializing, it's testing, and it's changing. Okay, so it's very important that you do not add I++ there because you will then be basically incrementing it twice. So how does a for loop work? It starts there. Integer I equals zero. Then it tests. So the for loop is also a pre-test loop. And it also means zero or more times it will run. Okay, so it will start at i equals zero, then it tests, is zero less than three? Yes, it is. So it prints out hello world. Let me just remove this. That's now not needed. So it checks, is the zero less than three? Yes, it prints out hello world. Then it runs this increment. So now i becomes, becomes one. It tests again. Is 1 less than 3? Yes, it is. It prints out hello world. Then it makes the 1 a 2. Then it tests again. Is 2 less than 3? Yes, it is. So it prints out hello world. Then it makes the 2 a 3. Is 3 less than 3? No. And it will stop executing the loop. So just another comment then for these three types of loops. How do we know which one to use? So you can actually use all three for all different cases, um, but some are a bit easier to use than others. So if you want to use uh, your while loop, or you can use your while loop if you want to run something zero or more times. You can use your do while loop if you want to run something exactly once before you start testing. Then you'll use the do while loop. And you'll use the for loop when you know exactly how many times you want to execute the loop. But you can also use it the same, basically the same as you can use the while loop. You can use them interchangeably. But in, in most cases, when we want to, or when we know the exact amount of times that we want to run a specific loop, then the for loop is a lot faster and easier to work with. But everything you can do with the for loop, you can also do with your normal while loop. Both of them are pre-test loops, and they will run zero or more times. So this is the basics of loops. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one.